very early in the morning, we came and landed on the beach where the water villas were built. And I remember that beach and all the people who they were all after this island. And we were working very hard to get it. Yeah, this is true because uh, out of all the new islands that were announced for tender at that time, this was the gem. Uh, Dunikolo was actually the most beautiful island that everybody wanted. Can you believe it? It's been 25 years. We started this journey mainly for of our brothers, Shabir, Nazir, Hassan and myself. A new generation of resort design. Coco Palm actually was a trendsetter and it was the forerunner to a lot of the projects that you see nowadays, right? Don't you think? That, that's very true. When we were designing the room, especially the water villas, and we were trying to create something whereby the guest will have total privacy in the room. There were a few other water villas in the country those days and they were side by side. When you step out, you see your neighbor immediately. I just took a piece of paper, pencil and a ruler and then little by little adjusted according to the same shape and we have done it. And this palm leaf, I mean that arrangement became the standard. Everybody is following that today. Not only that, it has become a landmark for the Maldives. built with passion and we were 100% involved in every aspect of this project from concept design to detail designing to looking for furniture, interior design and everything. So it was a very uh, much of a uh, project driven by passion, don't exactly, you think so? Exactly, exactly. That, that's exactly how it happened. I was planning to open the resort although we couldn't finish everything. But while that was happening, one day a Dhoni came and uh, they, I was told they wanted to meet me. Mm. When the Kashidu Dhoni came, I spoke, I met them and I told, uh, I wanted to ask what they wanted. And they said, we came to build the island for you. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so interesting. And they had all that, their people with Yeah, them, right? they, they had carpenters, masons, uh, I mean, some laborers and a few of those. And they, they really did a good job. It's a tropical magic. We really love being an, on an uninhabited island. We know how magical and how interesting it is, which is what a traveler from a big city like London is looking for, up, looking for. I remember when the construction was being done on certain nights when the moon is shining in the middle of the night, a few of our guys, so we would go and lie there and then look up, look at the sky and it was magical. So this is what we try to provide to a customer. We wanted the, uh, the resort or the island to be like a virgin island, uh, unspoiled natural island and to incorporate all the facilities with minimum invasion to the uh, natural habitat and to create something like a, a tropical paradise. Yeah, that's true, that's true. For the, for the construction, we used uh, smaller equipment. In fact, uh, the digging machine, we went all the way out to look for a very smaller, tiny one so that we do not damage a lot of vegetation when we are doing the construction. Then we had only about six or eight concrete machines. Okay and about 10 dumper trucks to carry items from location to location. And we didn't use a lot of heavy machinery, unlike nowadays. So in that, also we were trying to make sure that we do not damage the environment.
after 25 years, you know, when we sit down like this and talk about uh, the project, uh, another thing that I remember very fondly is the team that we have had, we had there at the time of construction and, you know, so many people that we should be thanking now. Uh, and they were all Maldivian, uh, Maldivians who were in charge of this uh, construction and all the work. Everybody was working day and night. I remember even at night we play bodubero and make uh, you know like uh, snacks and everything for them for tea and you know everybody is just in a frenzy to try and finish this project in no, time I, I think for the opening. So I this owe a big the, thank you to to this team. Yeah. Well, I think I mean we are proud that we we were able to do that and probably nowadays most people would not even remember that. Yes, we were underdogs, as Dambeb uh, uh, said earlier on. You know, a lot of people didn't take us too seriously. Uh, right from the very beginning, even at the time of the bidding stage, even during the construction stage, nobody took us seriously. But when the, when the resort was opened, it shook the industry. There was a rumor on the neighboring island saying, oh, these are a few boys. They came and they just put a stick up as an antenna. They can't do this. <laughs> and a few months later, when we had the restaurant, the bar, and the reception, these big buildings put up with the reception, with the ceiling and the roof all put up. They, uh, they were quite big buildings in comparison with what is in those islands. Uh -huh. And the rumor got around, oh, they have built very big buildings. <laughs> so from the neighboring island, the Khatib wanted to come and see. So we said, please come. They came and they were just walking around and I was with them to show the buildings. I tell you, they were speechless. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Yes, it's been 25 years.